Welcome to Install 108 Cabling FAS or V-Series Storage Controllers as a Standalone System. The building block videos are targeted at NetApp and partner engineers as well as do-it-yourself customers. Always consult the most recent documentation before starting any work. In this video, we will learn why starting with standalone systems makes troubleshooting easier even when the final configuration will be of a high availability pair or a cluster. We will also start discussing cable management and eliminating single points of failure to increase system uptime and data availability. If you drop your car off at a shop for repair and they returned it looking like this, you'd refuse to pay and would be afraid to get into your car. Cabling can be a nightmare to do, but it should never, ever look like a nightmare. Cable management. Do it right the first time to make maintenance easier later. Use vertical and horizontal cabling techniques to leave the cables neat and functionally organized. Run primary connections along the left side and secondary or partner connections on the right side. Do not bundle all excess cables around the controller. Coil excess cables into a service loop and mount the service loop next to the component the cable connects to. Keep fiber cable service loops large and provide bend radius protection to ensure the cables don't get broken. Use a Config Advisor tool available for free from the utility chest on the NetApp support website when you are finished to verify the systems are cabled correctly. This is the work of professionals. Anyone can do this. It only takes time and attention to detail. Identify single points of failure. The pairing of ports to a single ASIC chip is an industry standard practice used by component manufacturers, not by storage vendors. As the interface to the physical world, these chips do fail from electrical shocks and physical damage. The key is to never connect the primary and redundant cables to ports on the same ASIC chip. Where possible, you also want to separate primary and redundant cables across multiple circuit cards. This line diagram is representative of a typical HBA or network card. Eliminate single points of failure. Because there are hundreds of potential port combinations, NetApp has developed this algorithm for selecting ports to prevent shelf cabling that creates single points of failures or SPOFs. The first step is to eliminate any ports reserved for other purposes, like connecting a fiber channel or SAS tape devices. The next step is to write down all available A ports, followed by all of the C ports on a single line. Here we have SAS ports on the system board and SAS HBA cards in expansion slots 3 and 4. Next, recre recreate a line below the first line listing all the B and D ports. If we use these port combinations, we would violate both rules. All the ports are bonded on the same ASIC and are on the same circuit card. To resolve this, we shift the first port on the second line to the end of the list. Now we have port combinations that don't violate the rules. If we detect a single point of failure, we can keep shifting the port on the second line until the single point of failure is eliminated or is pushed to the end of the list where we may never have enough shelf stacks to ever use those ports. Let's run through the algorithm again with this diagram of a FAS3200 storage controller from the hardware universe. First we identify all available A ports 0A, 3A, and 4A and write those down on the first line. Then we identify the C ports and write them down. Now we start a new line by identifying all the B ports, followed by the D ports. Again, we see this arrangement has multiple single points of failure. So we move the first port entry to the end of the line, and now we see all the port pairings follow best practices. If this controller was being installed on a cluster, there would be 10 gigabit network cards in slots 1 and 2. And one thing to remember about expansion cards installed into slots on the right side of the controller is the PCI riser is to the left of the slot. So this means you have to install the card upside down. That means the ports run backwards from D to A. So remember to cable from right to left.
For demonstration purposes, we have a FAS 3100 system with DS14 fiber channel shells and no fiber channel HBA cards. Using the port algorithm, we can eliminate the ASICs' single points of failure, but not the system board. This is a compromise typical of low-end systems like the FAS 2200 series. We will use onboard port 0A as the primary path and 0D as a return path to connect the top controller to the shelf stack. The import of the A shelf controller module in the first shelf determines which controller owns the shelf stack from a hardware failover perspective. Disk ownership is still determined by software-based ownership. Using fiber cable, we plug into the SFP adapter and then do some cable management to route the fiber cable to follow horizontal cabling rules. Next, we create a service loop with the excess cable. The loop should be at least fist size for fiber cable to provide bend radius protection. The Velcro strips ship with the cables are black, but you can substitute colored Velcro strips to make cable tracing and management easier. The service loop is then mounted on the rail or the cabinet with Velcro next to the shelf the cable plugs into. Always leave a little bit of slack in the cables so it can be moved to perform maintenance. The next step is to connect the return cable from the out port of the B module in the last shelf to port 0D. The cables are run on the left side of the cabinet to help visually identify which controller has primary ownership of the shelf stack. Repeat the process for all other shelf stacks owned by the top controller. Then cable the bottom controller to all of its shelf stacks. Port 0A on controller 1 goes to the square port of the AIO module of the top shelf stack. Port 3D will connect to the circle port of the BIO module of the top shelf stack. The bottom controller connects to its shelf stack using port 3A as the primary connecting to the AIO module on the bottom shelf stack. The 0B port serves as a return path by connecting to the circle port of the BIO module of the bottom shelf stack. Before we tackle more complicated cabling, we should verify the cabling we have already done is correct. The Install 109 video demonstrates how to verify and fix cabling issues in maintenance mode. 